Now we turn to a burning love story between one couple and the natural world. The documentary Fire of Love tells the epic tale of scientists Katya and Maurice Kraft and their lifelong quest to discover the stories and the secrets of volcanoes. This is Katya, and this is Maurice. <laughs> Tomorrow will be their last day. They will leave behind hundreds of hours of footage, thousands of photos, and a million questions. Since its release, the film has received critical acclaim and an Oscar nomination. Director Sarah Doza joins Hari Srinivasan to discuss the incredible footage shot by the pair during their daring expeditions. Thanks, Sarah Doza. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, first of all, <laughs> when you look at the premise of this movie, it kind of first just blows your mind. What? There was a couple who studied volcanoes. H how did you find this story? Um, first, just thank you so much for having me on today. It's great to be here. I, I first found the story actually serendipitously um, while doing research with my team on the last film I directed. That's a film called The Seer and the Unseen, and it follows the story of an Icelandic woman who's in communication with spirits of nature. And we wanted to open that film actually with archival imagery of erupting volcanoes in Iceland. And once we went about that research, we learned about Katja and Maurice Kraft, because not that many people had filmed erupting volcanoes in Iceland before, uh, but they had. Once we learned about their love for each other on the planet, we were absolutely hooked. Um, they seemed like they had this kind of mythic love story, the fact that they were in love with each other and the earth. So that got the ball rolling on, um, on making Fire of Love. Alone, they could only dream of volcanoes. Together, they can reach them. They meet on a blind date at a cafe. From here on out, life will only be volcanoes, volcanoes, Volcanoes. C'est très dur de volcanologues qui vivent ensemble parce que c'est très volcanique. Donc franchement, ça fait des éruptions très souvent. <laughs> Tell me about this couple. Uh, that's sort of so fascinating to me. How did two people who love volcanoes so much uh, decide to do this? Yeah, Katia and Maurice Kraft are, are such singular individuals. Um, they met uh, as university students uh, in Alsace, France in the late 60s, and they realized that they both possessed this rare passion for volcanoes. Um, both of them grew up in post-war France right along the German border, and they both um, possessed kind of a sense of disillusionment uh, with humanity. They kind of felt that humans destroyed more than they created, uh, whereas they had this idyllic vision of volcanoes as this creative force, that, you know, that uh, created land that brought life to the world. Um, and having that unique perspective at such a young age caused them to bond. Um, once they began traveling the world together, exploring erupting volcanoes, uh, they experienced a kind of uh, transcendence, perhaps uh, you, you could, could call it, um, by witnessing something that powerful, that beguiling as a volcanic eruption, there was kind of no turning back. Um, they wanted to dedicate their lives towards exploring that mystery and the fact that they had each other along the way made it all the more important um, and meaningful for them. Tell us about all of these um, reels of footage that you must have gone through, all the still photos that you use in here. I mean. They were, they were documenting all of this in part for scientific research, right? They were, yes. Katia and Maurice and um, their co cohort, when they first started out working in, in volcanology, uh, were um, really devoted towards capturing uh, volcanic phenomena on, on camera because you know, no volcano erupts the same way twice. Uh, this is fleeting phenomena. And when you can set it uh, to the camera through still photography or cinematography, it becomes a kind of scientific data that allows study time and time again. So their work was extremely important. And it also enabled their, uh, their adventures um, to, to move forward because they were supported for this kind of uh, documentation work as well. Um, uh, but that caused them to shoot just hundreds of hours of footage. It wasn't just data, it was also a conduit for them to connect with kind of the, the beauty and the magic and, and the mystery of the planet. So they were um, absolutely in love with, with capturing the imagery as well. 
um, catching Maurice Ross's celebrities in France, uh, or they became celebrities over time in France because people were so intrigued by this unique love, uh, life, um, life's pursuit and this love story. Uh, and so they appeared on television shows, uh, on the news. Um, they even had their own educational program for kids. So all to say, along with all of the footage that they themselves shot, there was a visual and audio record of them um, that uh, was available to us to, to get to use as well. Yeah, we don't, I guess we take it for granted now because we've grown up seeing things that, well, before these two, no one had ever seen rivers of lava flowing, right? Unless you happen to live near a volcano or some of the types of eruptions. Now, of course, we go do that with bigger cameras and lenses, and but they were really the pioneers in this, that bringing back this footage of almost another world to the rest of us. Yeah, that's a beautiful way of putting it. And of course, people have lived in relationship with volcanoes for, for thousands and thousands of years, depicting it through art and through stories. Um, but the way that Katya and Maurice uh, used their cameras to, to document volcanoes, um, it, again, it, it wasn't just scientific data. I, I really believe it was art. Um, there's such a palpable love that radiates behind their frames. Um, you can really feel that kind of connectedness, that desire to be as close as possible. And uh, they did, in fact, go as, as close as possible to get these kinds of shots. I'm still in awe of the kinds of compositions that they captured, especially considering the, you know, the heat. Um, one of my favorite shots is of Katya uh, in Iceland in, in the mid 80s, when she gets up so close um, to the edge of the Krafla volcano um, and she has a thermometer in her hands, and apparently that reading was 1,200 degrees Celsius. And uh, there's moments where you can kind of detect a smile on her face as she's coming back, and she's just in awe. She's just absolutely in love, yet that is just utterly dangerous, what, what she's experiencing in that moment. Yeah, you know, and there are these really wonderful kind of lighthearted moments as well. Yes, they have the camera there to capture kind of the potential eruption and all this other stuff, but... It's also a little bit like, you know, your home videos. I just happen to be right next to a volcano. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, Katia and Maurice um, were known for their sense of humor. They were very playful people. Uh, that comes across absolutely in their footage, um, and it's something that uh, their friends and, and colleagues and family members who we actually interviewed as well always spoke about. But as, as a team, we talked a lot about their humor, um, both in terms of how we can make sure that their personality was captured in, in our film, um, but also what it means to kind of live in relationship to death the way the two of them did. You know, they, they knew that they could die at any moment pursuing such dangerous work, and that almost seemed to free them up uh, to understand the kind of absurdity of life, so to speak. Um, there was a levity to things. Uh, they were kind of freed from lesser concerns, perhaps. Uh, they would always comment on what they viewed as kind of petty and vain um, human preoccupations. Uh, but to be close to a volcano, it was kind of akin to being with the divine in a way. And that seemed to allow them to dwell in these kind of playful, humorous worlds that were bound up with their life's philosophy too. The unknown is not something to be feared. It is something to go toward. Moi, j'aime bien qu'il par... qu marche devant moi. Je me dis, s'il va se tuer, je préfère être avec lui, donc. You know, they kind of took different approaches. Um, you, at one point, described one of them as a bird and the other one uh, as, what, a seal. Explain that. Sure, yes, yeah. In that scene, we call, we say Katia is more like a bird. Maurice is more like an elephant seal. And, and we use these two shots of them each playing, Katia playing with a bird um, that's kind of like diving and she's kind of bobbing and weaving with it. And then Maurice is is egging on this, this bull elephant seal, um, just a very dangerous animal, yet he's kind of beckoning it to, to come towards him. Um, that comparison, uh, we really wanted to use their own footage to describe their own personalities. Um, and we also, uh, uh, that specific reference actually comes from, um, and was inspired by a few lines in their obituary uh, that describe them in similar terms. Um, I should say that every creative choice that we made in the film was really guided by Katya and Reese themselves. We really saw them 
as our North Star. Um, but as you said, they were very different people. Uh, they had this shared goal and they knew that they needed each other uh, and to um, support each other in pursuing this meaningful life of love with their volcanoes. Um, but they did have different approaches and that created conflict at times. Katya was uh, thought to be a bit more methodological. Um, uh, she by no means was cautious. She was extremely bold and courageous. Um, but Maurice was uh, a bit more impetuous. <laughs> He's just so desired to be as close to volcanoes as possible that he would risk absolutely everything. Um, he was known to have uh, a certain kind of antics or uh, to really um, be such a daredevil that uh, sometimes Katya believed that his daring ways would jeopardize the legitimacy of their scientific work. And so that caused the two of them to tussle. Um, however, they would always kind of reconcile knowing, again, that they, they had to if they were going to live this, this life of purpose that they um, so, um, you know, uh, yeah, devoted their, their lives to pursuing. They shifted at one point from studying the kind of red volcanoes, the hot lava that we think about, to the gray volcanoes, which spew tons of ash and cause all kinds of other destruction. Uh, why did they do that? And why was that significant? Uh, that's a great question. Um, they were so dedicated to exploring all kinds of volcanoes. And so, of course, we're very aware um, and intrigued by gray volcanoes, otherwise known as explosive volcanoes. Um, but they were particularly animated by the pursuit of the unknown. Um, they uh, had an opportunity in 1980 when Mount St. Helens erupted to delve deeply into, uh, into researching a gray volcano like Mount St. Helens. Um, of course, there's a, a tragedy. Um, nearly 60 people were killed. Uh, the entire area was destroyed, yet it was a watershed moment in the field of volcanology to study um, this kind of once in a human lifetime type of eruption. It absolutely ignited Katya and Maurice's curiosity, and they felt like there was an opportunity to delve into, um, you know, this type of volcano that wasn't as well understood because they're so rare, because they're so powerful, and because they're so dangerous. And for Katya, who is particularly driven by kind of um, this pursuit of scientific understanding, for her, she, she wanted to to uh, have this opportunity to to really learn. And Maurice too, he of course was. In, um, uh, so in love with that idea as well, but the danger got him all the more excited. And so for them, um, uh, they decided to kind of compromise and, and dedicate their lives uh, towards studying gray volcanoes. And I say compromise because at that moment in, in their relationship and in their lives, Maurice was very much wanting to um, uh, develop a kind of uh, vessel that would allow him to ride down a lava flow, a, a red lava flow. So <laughs> um, he was so excited about this and um, would often tease Katya with this. It's kind of like they wanted to, or he wanted to get so close that he literally wanted to be in the lava flow. But uh, through their conversations, um, based on our, our research, uh, they kind of compromised and instead, instead said, okay, studying explosive volcanoes, that kind of will get uh, them as close to the danger as Maurice wants and provides this opportunity for understanding what Katya wants. Um, and so they really shifted their focus towards that kind of study and that carried them through the rest of their lives. How did the scientific community um, react to them? Yeah, um, so the scientific community definitely has diverse opinions about Kaitin and Maurice. By and large, what we found with the science advisors that we were working with on our film and since the film has been released is that Kaitin and Maurice were very much celebrated as pioneers. They were so dedicated uh, towards collecting this imagery and so driven by their love uh, that their work went on to inspire uh, generations of people to go into geosciences as well. And for Katya in particular, she battled such sexism doing the work that she did as one of the only women um, in uh, volcanology at that time. Um, and one of the most rewarding things that's happening for our team now is we get all kinds of letters from people saying, I knew about Katya when I was little and, and I learned about her and she was the reason why I'm a geoscientist now. Or some people today are saying, thank you for Katya. My, my little girl uh, saw her dressed up for uh, you know as Katya for Halloween and now um, you know it's engendering this this love of science so um, the way that she in particular was a role model um, uh, was extremely meaningful um, but of course you know they did defy uh, safety regulations to to go about uh, the work that they did and um, and that created some controversy for people for sure um, but it 
their kind of life's work really begs that question. How far would you go for your work? Um, how far would you, what would you sacrifice for your passion, especially in the name of science? And that's something that a lot of scientists today very much wrestle with um, in order to do the kind of daring um, and world changing work that, that they do. You know, well, one thing I wonder is, <clears throat> You know, perhaps this is a testament to your filmmaking, but by the time we get to the point in the film where we discuss the end of their lives, as a viewer, you're you're sad. You you've felt connected to them over the period of the film. And I wonder, given all the research you did, what did you learn about what happened to them? Yeah. On their last trip, Katya and Maurice were very focused on capturing a, a very particular shot of a pyroclastic flow, which is one of the most dangerous forces on the planet. They wanted to do so um, so that they could illustrate how pyroclastic flows moved um, so they could put it in a video about understanding volcanic hazards that they were using to teach governments and decision makers um, how, how to comprehend this very mysterious and very dangerous force. It was really their goal that, in Maurice's quixotic terms, that volcanoes no longer kill, which of course is not actually possible, but they witnessed such devastation, namely at the eruption of Nevado del Ruiz in, in Colombia in 1985, where over 22,000 people died because they were not evacuated in time, there weren't proper warning systems put in place, um, that they really wanted to use their imagery to instead uh, teach people on how these dangerous forces worked to save lives. So that's really what they were doing that day in June in 1991 um, at the base of Mount Unzen. They were trying to capture a particular shot. Um, and it's tragic, yet there's something deeply kind of poignant and poetic about the fact that um, they were trying to save lives when they themselves lost their own life, lives. Um, they did so along with 41 other people, including their friend and fellow volcanologist, Harry Glicken. Um, so it's quite tragic and there's people that are mourning them today, um, but their work really has gone on to, to save lives and to teach people how to understand this uh, very mysterious force. So on a brighter note, uh, what's it like to be an Oscar nominee? Oh, um, it's a profound honor and I, I'm deeply humbled. Uh, I'm still surprised uh, by our Oscar nomination. Um, my team and I, we, we tend to make kind of idiosyncratic films about idiosyncratic people and we never in a million years imagined that this would happen. But it, it's one of those moments where I just kind of look back and feel just an overwhelming sense of gratitude for all my mentors, for my collaborators, for Katya and Maurice for sharing their story with us, even you know from their volcano in the sky. Um, yeah, I think gratitude is really the, the thing that rushes forth most. Um, I also uh, am humbled to be in the company of, of the other films nominated. Uh, I absolutely love them all, and I've developed friendships with, with the filmmakers along this journey. And, and so it's very meaningful uh, to be in this all together. Um, and yeah, I just, I love the fact that more people are going to know the story of Katya and Reese Craft now. Um, you know, uh, their story hasn't uh, been come uh, come to light that much in the in the past thirty years since their their deaths. So the fact that people get to know uh, this um, wonderfully charismatic couple um, who can really relay what it means to fall in love with the earth. Uh, that is particularly gratifying for me. Um, and um, the fact that their work is getting this kind of recognition today is, is very meaningful. The film is called Fire of Love. Director Sarah Dosa, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thank you so much for having me.